Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 4. We open on Gal wondering why Kelly Belly has left them on red. And at long last, we encounter someone who, if not cares, at least seems aware of the concept of distance, as Elrond informs her that Eregion is actually, um, quite far away. If you recall, Elrond was put in charge of this new field trip, and he's doing his best to prepare for it. Gonna need some handy folks to come with us. I trust you've got some peeps you can recommend. Trust? You trust me? No, that's just an extremely common turn of phrase, but by all means, take this opportunity to get your panties in a twist. Look, it was dad's idea for you to come along. By all means, stay home if you want. Fine, fine, yes, I have people to recommend. You shall be the fellowship Oh, oops, sorry. Wrong movie. Then we get sweeping shots of teeny tiny people trekking across vast distances. It sort of reminds me of something. I can't quite put a finger on it. This whole opening sequence was really important and effective because it established two things. First, that despite appearances, long distances between places in Middle-earth exist. And two, that Gal is still in search of the maturity and wisdom that she will at some point in the very, very distant future, become known for. Anyway, we cut to a random bridge. Well, folks, that was a fun little montage, but it uh, looks like we're gonna be heading home now. While Elrond tries to figure out a different route, a way to get around this, Gal has a main character moment. No earthly force could do this. This was the work of Sauron. She gets a flash of the upside down. Elrond is presented with two options for alternate routes, the shorter of which takes them through the hills in the south. There's evil in those hills, ancient and filled with malice. So I went ahead and looked up the word malice, and the dictionary says it means the intention or desire to do evil. So Gal has described the evil in those hills as intending evil. But I digress. They have a chat about how the shorter way with the evil that intends evil is more dangerous and they should go the long way. But Gal is no more persuasive than Gandalf was. And so the Fellowship decides to go through Moria. I mean, um, south. They decide to go south. Gal is super pissed about this, but Elrond is having none of it. Your new bling will not be our navigator, got it? She pouts at the hideous ring. You got a problem with it? You can go home. I wish I could go home. I literally just said you can. <sighs> You'd all die without me. Cut to... Somewhere? Great Value Gandalf is still looking for his not hobbits, but um, wandering around aimlessly and occasionally saying their names is proving an ineffective strategy at finding them. He does, however, stumble upon a goat and some guy. Great Value Gandalf decides to tell this guy about how he and the not hobbits were looking for some super specific stars, and these stars are directly above this guy's house. But then, as new guy hums to himself, like Winnie the Pooh, a whimsical wind carries off Great Value Gandalf's star doodle, and it leads him to a tree branch. Great Value Gandalf tries to break off this whole ass tree limb with his bare hands. You have to respect the ambition. But like a fool of a took, he's pissed off the tree and gets swallowed up by it. R.I.P. Great Value Gandalf. Then we cut to the not hobbits who are not only alive, but got spit out by the twister in the exact same place. What are the odds? The Great Value Gandalf isn't the only one to run into a new dude. Rufio seems a little bit confused about who they are or who he is. Samantha Wise is into it. They start shouting about his water and he tells them to keep it down, but that just makes them shout even more. So he does the only sensible thing a person can do in that situation and tries to put as much distance between himself and these screaming women as possible. But unfortunately they overpower him and then bully him into telling him where he's from. But then we're treated to a moment of levity, comedy even. You see, he's trying to give them a quick 101 of the rules where he's from, but he just can't quite get the numbering right. Going from one to B, to four. This goes by lightning quick, so in case you missed it, Nori wonders aloud to Samantha Wise if that was three rules or four. You see, he gave them three rules, but he numbered the third one four. Hilarious. And then we enter Galaxy's Edge? Harfoots? Living in holes? We are not Harfoots. We're stewards. Honestly, so rude of Nori to assume. Like, so offensive. You brought them here? You are so stupid, so dumb, the dumbest dummy who ever dumb- Hey, that's mean. You sassing me? Oh, 
That was the fourth rule. We love a clever and well-timed callback to a previous joke. Name one good reason we should let you stay. Joking time is over. It's epic emotional speech o'clock. I have walked and walked and walked for friendship and destiny and epic reasons. And this dude who's really big. I said one reason. Guess jokes are back on the menu, boys. So these stores want to know about this big friend of theirs. He's a giant. He's an elf. No, bigger. Oh, a grand elf. He's a wizard. <gasps> the only wizard around here is the bad wizard. And then the girls get tied up. Then we cut to the moth club. The sand people have to explain how despite their very cunning plan, they let the wizard get away. What about the halflings? Are you allowed to call them that? Isn't that word just for hobbits? Isn't that like offensive to harfoots? Or is halfling like European and then harfoot is like saying you're Irish? Whatever. Not to worry, master. We are combing the desert for them. You handle the hobbit, uh, I mean the harfoots. I'll deal with the wizard. And then it's back to the tree. Let him out again. You shouldn't be waking. Eat earth. Dig deep. Oh, of course. This is a prequel origin story for Treebeard. I guess Rings of Power is about how he's going to get his tree rings. And when Great Value Gandalf gets rescued and he wants to know who this guy is. Who? Little old me? Why, I'm just Tom Bombadil. Of course he is. And then we cut to Great Value Gandalf having a bath. I'm sorry, my dude, but you are no Geralt. Why were you looking for the stars anyway? I was looking for my friends. Tom tells us that stars are newcomers, and he remembers a sky that was dark without them. Are you guys getting the feeling that he's a bit old? And he turns paper into bread? Who are you? Who are you? You're young. I'm old. Guess they worried the whole, I remember the sky before there were stars was a little too subtle. Eldest. That's what I am. What do you mean, eldest? Eldest. That's the name of the episode. Tom was there before the river and before the trees. Tom remembers the first raindrop and the first acorn. Yeah, okay, we get it, honestly. This whole place used to be green. Now it's all sand. I don't like sand. Great Value Gandalf says that he was hoping that the tree would lend him a branch. Should have tried asking it. Duh. And he yawns and it creates a fireball and the goat freaks out. Easy there. Tom comforts the goat as if it was freaking out over nothing. But sir, you just casually exhale the fireball. I think the goat is well within its rights to be a little concerned. Hey, yeah, so, um, you seem to have the hang of things. Could you, um... Teach me to use a wizard staff? A wizard staff is like your name. It's yours to wield already. If you prove yourself worthy. Wait, you can wield your name? But only if you're worthy? So like it doesn't belong to you if you're not worthy? I'm so confused. You're not worthy. Yet. I was never going to find a staff under these stars. I was going to find you. Ah yes, the old. Tom is the true staff you found along the way. Uh-oh, sand people approaching. But why are they looking for me? You aren't the first magic man to fall from the sky. The first one turned to the dark side. What happened? He's taken over a bunch, but he wants more. But he can only get more with the help of someone even more magic than him. <gasps> Sauron? Wait, how does Great Value Gandalf know about Sauron? Didn't he fall from the sky like a few weeks ago? Can you stop them? Gonna have to plead the fifth on that one. Anyway, here I be. Gotta go pick some flowers. So, is it up to me? Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Then we cut to the dark forest. What is this place? Men call it the Barrow Downs. In ancient times, they buried their dead here. Wait, I thought these were the ancient times. Even the trees seem ill at ease. Fear not. Dead men are no threat. So instead of moving through there quick like, um, they just had to hang out, you know, take in the vibes. And what should they happen upon? The news! We must go. Instantly chains attack. Almost like the chains were waiting for this cue. And then the Cave of Wonder swallows that one unlucky elf. And out come the zombies. It's giving power to the Caribbean. They try stabbing them, but they're already dead, so yeah. Then Gal gets the chain treatment, but Big broski saves her. Well, well, well. How the turntables. Elrond luckily downloaded the World of Guide and is able to explain to the Fellowship 
the notes on how to beat this level. So the zombies can only be killed by the weapons they were buried with. They've been here for a thousand years. Something has awakened them. No. Some. One. Then we cut to a search party is looking for Theo. They left all their weapons. Weird. The sealed door looks sad. Don't worry. Kid's been through worse. He'll be fine. I mean, that's not actually how that works, but... He spots an extremely visible flame that everyone else missed and finds the bodies. Next morning, back in the Southlands, people are shouting about wanting to raid the camps, but they're worried about escalation. We gotta quit arguing and keep looking for Theo. Dude, it's full daylight. Wait until it's dark again like before and then go out to search for him. That's a much better time. Daylight hours are for arguing. It is known. You should look for him up north. Sounds good. Let's not waste daylight. Everyone pack up. Wait, so you brought out a search party in the middle of the night and you didn't find him. So you came back when it was daylight to tell everyone that you didn't find him and then talk about it. And then now the whole of the Southlands is going to pack up and go look for him again. He sealed where fixes the aqueduct. So yay. Romantic mud wiping moment, which is interrupted by Arendir, who has finally decided to be suspicious of New Girl. Did the wild men hurt you? Uh, what the heck, man? She's got a fresh looking wound. Oh no, that was, that was just clumsy little me being a silly goose with the fire. Whoopsie dipsy. There, there. Oh no, he's on to me. Hiya! Nope. Ta-da, she's evil. Was any of it real? Would you rather I died? Maybe. <laughs> Then Arendir kneels. Not idly to the leaves of Lorien fall. Sorry, wrong movie. Uh, Arendir somehow figures out that Theo's been taken by orcs. And we cut to Theo in a tree prison with some other dudes. Then back to Arendir, Isildur, and the new girl. Finally heading in the right direction. I thought like everyone was going out to search. Where's everyone else? Uh oh, Isildur got stuck in some quicksand. Arendir tries to get him out, but just goes in with him. Guess it's down to Gurley to save. And they're completely gone. Well. R.I.P. is still door and errand, dear. Girlie's piecing out. Oh, but wait, what's this? Girlie actually just went to get a big stick? I really don't feel like this stick is gonna do m Oh, <gasps> Shy Halud? Is it you? Then uh, Arendir Geralt's his way on out of that beastie. What was that? There are nameless beasties in the deep. Yeah, yeah, just so you don't know. This one we shall call supper. Hope it's not poisonous. And we cut back to Galaxy's Edge. Nori very organically and naturally brings up Sadik's name. Why did you say that name? Then the lady shows Nori this whole ass mural that's about the story of how this one guy was gonna go find the land of their dreams that's like the green place and she wants to know if Nori's from there. Nah, we just kind of wander around. Uh-oh, intruder alert. Lady tries to sass them but smack! The nice sand person helps her up. You know, the old good cop, bad cop. Where are the not hobbits? Dunno. You wanna know how I got these scars? Then back to the fellowship. I know you think my ring is a liar or whatever, but I don't think that. I think it's helping us. At what price though? Is there no limit for you? Nope. And you're good with that? Honestly, no, but like Sauron is so bad. So like, you know, this is all I got. Uh-huh. This ring is making me like super aware of what's at stake, like way more than before. Yeah, there was this um prediction that one day Kelly Belly's life would be in my hands. So I, yeah, I kind of feel like I gotta do this right to keep him safe, you know? Keeping stuff safe is like, an elf's whole deal. I get it. Then Gal gets a force vision of Elrond in trouble. Promise me you'll make Sauron your number one priority, even above my life. Did the ring tell you to say that? Maybe. Yeah, I'm not making promises based on what that ring says. But also, I do promise that I will make Sauron my number one priority, even over you. Wait, but didn't you just say- isn't that- Okay, whatever. Back to the Southlands. Arendir gives Gurley the key to her handcuffs. Aww. Is that the key to your handcuffs? Oh, for the love of God. Do they really think we can't work that out for ourselves? He actually left it for you to decide whether to use it. I mean, if that's what Arendir had intended, he could have just given the key to his sealed door directly instead of leaving it right next to her. It's a sweet, romantic- Psych! Pulls out his sword. They'll cast me out. You know they will. Then Arendir, who's super far away now for some reason, draws his bow. I won't let them. Now put it down. It's not looking like she's gonna drop it, but not to fear, Isildur is saved by an Entwife? As the resident elf, Arendir makes introductions. Did you ever hurt a tree? Uh, I mean, yeah. Die! The whole team is waking up now, and they are not liking that sword. It's not for hurting trees. What does it hurt? Orcs! There was an army of them. 
maiming, murdering. These trees are super chatty. They're really making Tree Bird look quite dim. Anyway, these trees yap, yap, yap about orcs being bad and evil and destructive, blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, these two make Mary and Pippin look like wallflowers. Isildur, meanwhile, is really chill about this whole thing. Arendir tries some more Elvish, which they seem into. The trees yap at him some more. Arendir makes some promises that he can't possibly keep about making sure that not a single other tree in the area is ever gonna be harmed again. And then the trees lead them to Theo and he's fine. And Isildur checks on Gurley and she is fine. And then Gurley's actual real boyfriend that she totally didn't make up uh, is fine. Do I smell a love triangle? Oh goody. Thanks for saving me. Oh, I didn't do it for you. I just promised your mom. Aw. Thanks. I must dash. Orcs to hunt and whatnot. Uh, you wanna come? Nah. Then we cut to said orcs, marching along, having a grand time. And then we cut to the fellowship, observing the orcs. And the elves calmly discuss how it is a little concerning seeing all these orcs on their way to Aragion. Oh no, one of the elves catches a stray. R.I.P. elf dude. Elrond and Gal seem a little concerned. Wait, what? Gal can force heal now? But then Gal gives her ring to Elrond because of, um, reasons? Before going and confronting the orcs, alone and we're doing beaver vendetta now lucky for her the orcs kind of all just stand around gaping at how ridiculously she's behaving which is really the only thing that lets her get away with this wow she sacrificed herself to save us no she did it to save the ring damn man that's cold gal does some more super fancy moves until finally someone knocks her off that horse well 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 if it isn't your old pal evil ned karma's a bitch sweetheart and yeah that's the end of the episode. We learned that um, the Entwives have not been lost yet. We learned that the Not Hobbits somehow survived. We learned that Gal can force heal. We learned that... Mm, yeah, that's all I got. Anyway, can't wait for next week when we are sure to learn so many more things.